I think that there's so many things that unite us as people of color that are largely underrepresented. It's needed to, again, to just have that voice being heard. I think we don't, we're too often silenced when we get frustrated and we, we back away from those challenges. And I think it's time that we start to name them and take them head on. We did not dig this hole in like a couple of years. And it's not gonna be dug out in like a couple of years. Every new job that I take, to the extent that I'm moving up, the diversity of the room diminishes, which means the richness of the conversations we're having about how to serve kids continues to have more blind spots. As people of color, how do we develop ourselves? How do we start raising our voices in a collective way to make sure that we are having these conversations in our own organizations of value? And how do we make sure that we are bringing other people to the table? Our kids don't need no past school people. They need people who are committed to them for the long haul. I can't imagine talking about the collective without talking about the 20th anniversary summit or the introduction of the diversity core value. Powerful, overwhelming, and connected. I remember when I was, I was sitting next to this woman, Aisha, who I was an 98 core member with, and we were listening to certain speakers. I, and I remember listening to Ana Ponte, actually, as she was speaking, and we turned and looked at each other and just said, wow because we had not realized just the numbers that you know had come together over time and were part of our community. And it was just powerful to just be together and holding arms and reconnecting and, and realizing the power of our alumni of color. When first asked about launching an alumni of color association, I had to think long and hard about what it would take. So I proceeded to meet with alumni of color across the country to hear their stories and understand the impact we'd all like to have. Uh, many of my students didn't see people like them in positions of power. An alumni association for people of color can make sure that that happens in the future. I know that when I, when I did the core, that first week of induction, I was looking for the other people of color. And in Chicago, I didn't necessarily find that many. And I think an alumni association can really be a powerful way to identify people who have common identities with, common perspectives, shared experiences, and be able to build those relationships and connections to really create some meaningful change. The reflections we heard led to the three pillars of the collective, which then led to the work that we would pursue. So the three pillars of the collective are at the foundation and at the true heart of what we do both regionally and nationally. Whether it is a crawfish bowl that builds community and networking within a region, or Story Slam that helps to tell the stories of our communities. That work is all tied to our three pillars, allowing us as an alumni of color community to have a greater impact and be combined together. I still deeply believed in the mission of Teach for America and because my experience with my kids just so greatly impacted me and who I was and what I wanted to do with my life and my purpose, there was still a very fond place that Teach for America had in my heart, but I realized that the work that I wanted to do with Teach for America and for Teach for America, I had to do outside of the organization and be a partner. And from there, I just kind of unofficially like took on responsibility of like, you know what, let's bring everybody together. My perspective of being a school leader of color prior to coming to the collective conference was lonely, that I was one of a few leaders of color in my network. But after having come to this conference, I see that I am in a unique position to lead with a bunch of really amazing people. I just feel like I'm a part of a bigger movement that makes me feel like I'm not a miss alone. I personally am so glad that we finally have the collective and in any organization or in anything you do, you need a collective voices that come together that represent 
a certain, certain groups and certain interests and certain voices. And now that we have this collective national board, I just feel so excited about it. Um, and the reason for it is because it's helping me have access to voices that, um, of people who are just doing remarkable work. When asked why we decided to form a national advisory board, I can't imagine a time where it's more important that Teach for America and our alumni base is working intentionally to build a diverse coalition of leadership. In our first meeting, I looked around the room and I just was blown away, absolutely inspired by the group that had assembled. My hope is that the collective becomes one of the strongest and most influential networks for alumni of color, for people of color. We are much stronger together than we are apart. I think that developing a strong network and engaging in experiences to develop as leaders, we're creating a system for more people of color to be leading in education spaces. I think it's really important that alumni engage those people who feel like they have something critical to share, those people who feel like they have something positive to share. I think we need everyone to lean in and to be honest and authentic in their feedback so that we can go forward positioned as best as possible to reach one day because I know we're all aligned on that. It is the collective duty and privilege of all of us to stop wasting energy, but to empower the next generation of student leaders as they fight for justice.